Hello everyone. So always on the wild side of life, I think you probably all know that little song. No? Well, now you will have it in your, in your mind and that you will associate that with fallow deer. So was fallow deer always wild? Um, I believe that you probably know what fallow deer is, or if not, uh, well, I hope I will give you some uh, insight. Uh, so to start with, uh, you have to know that there's two subspecies species of fallow deer. And uh, so the, U the European fallow deer that uh, most of you probably have seen, um, because it is nowadays the mostly widespread, and this is in fact due to uh, humans. And the other one is the Mesopotamian fallow deer that is, on the contrary, very, very restricted to the eastern Mediterranean and um, the, the, the Near East. And here you don't see anything because uh, it's actually like found in very, very small places and was reintroduced. So basically, from outside, they look very different. Um, one is bigger than the other one, but when we look at the bones, it's a bit more difficult uh, to, to see this, this difference. Uh, also, you see here they have very uh, different uh, geographic repartition in the Holocene. Uh, so the, after the, the late glacial um, uh, time, like the European fallow was uh, found in Western Anatolia and the European, uh, the Mesopotamian fallow deer, uh, so all, all over the, the Near East. But they have this same, uh, they share this same story with, and this relationship with humans that in the fact that they have been moved by humans uh, to different places, maybe more restrictive for the Mesopotamian fallow deer, or this is what we kind of knew from bef before uh, um, I started to step in with, with that project, and uh, I will present you some new new things. I don't have yet like a more general um, um, story for you, because I'm still like um, playing with the data and, and everything. Um, and this, this is so that there are different repartition that, uh, that we know of for uh, the Mesopotamian and the, and the European. And a, a fact is that none, of, none are nat native to any of Mediterranean islands. So they have been either brought by humans or, or they swim. I mean, effectively, they can swim, but not on such long distances. So we, we know now from like a lot of research that they have been brought by humans. Uh, so the, the big, the big, the overarching objective of, of my project is like to to provide a, a new interpreted uh, perspective on the biocultural history of fallow deer and like transform of our understanding of like exchange between culture. But also there's a, a few things about like trying to inform modern conservation policy and especially about the Mesopotamian fallow deer, but also the European one. Um, and the so what I'm trying to do first in, in the, in the archaeology, uh, archaeological level is like trying to different the, the two species uh, because it's not, it's not that easy. And um, oh, there, there's, there's been a lot of things assumed, but it's actually it's not, it's not easy to distinguish and to, to track the follow their, the follow their dispersal and therefore like human exchange and traits and also understand the specific relationship and how they have been managed and domesticated over time. So I'm trying to use like different, or I will try to use different strain of data uh, after I am done with what I'm doing at the moment, which is uh, I'm using the geometric morphometric, which is the quantitative representation and analysis of morphological shape using geometric coordinates instead of linear. So we, we get a more, um, a more o overall um, morphology. It's more, we, we get more detail than just linear measurement. And with linear measurement, we cannot necessarily differentiate both fallow deer because there's a lot of overlap. Because you know that female and male are very uh, sexually dimorphic. So there, there will be a huge overlap that we cannot 
necessarily tell them apart. Uh, so like one uh, bone that I'm working on is the teeth. So this is roughly my protocol um, where I'm using like fixed landmark and semi landmarks to try to get the whole geometry of the of the tooth. Um, so what I, I will focus now on like Mediterranean islands because this is the topic of the session, but I'm, I'm working widely like all over Eastern Eurasia. Uh, so I will focus on Cyprus and you see that there's a lot of sites uh, from different periods and that was my main field work for, a lot, for, for many years and there's loads and loads and loads of material there. It's, it's crazy. The, the, the relationship that these people had with Paolo deer is just amazing. Uh, and, and then uh, I think in the abstract maybe I, I talked about Crete but I, unfortunately I won't have access to any of this material so I have to drop it off. Uh, but I have well, one sample from Sicily and, and some uh, samples from Mallorca, and I will go there again after to get more, uh, because it's very interesting, you'll see. Um, so if we go into the, the, the subject of the, of the data, so just to, just to show you a, um, a, a quick thing at first, so I, I did, we do use like modern reference. So here you see like, um, European fellow deer reference that is mainly from the UK and the Mesopotamian fellow deer reference is a very small population uh, from Israel that have been reintroduced and you can see like they're very very different but the green in the middle those are Paleolithic Mesopotamian fellow deer and you see that there's less overlap so we thought like okay those ones are like really, really, really different. So that's probably a result to inbreeding and, and, and things. So that's just to keep in mind uh, the, the conservation informative uh, um, conservation policy that archaeology can, can, can bring. Like this population is really, is really very, very different from one we see in the past. So past that, uh, my, my reference is therefore Paleolithic uh, Mesopotamian Folladier. And when I plotted the, the Cypriot samples, at first when I saw I was like, wow, what is that? It's, it's not working, it's not working. Uh, but actually, so you see there's, there's not very much variance. I mean, it's only 33.6% and 21.8% and it's, it's not not very much. So you have, to, you have to look a little bit further. And then when, when you take into account the, the third component, you can see that there's, there's starting to be like a, a more uh, uh, differentiate between groups where that Cyprus is still like all over the place. And I was like, what does it mean? I mean, why? And so we, we tried to test the, the, the variance of the, of the overall population. So that's, that represents the whole sample from different period. And, but for each period, there's a lot of variance. And we came to the conclusion, and that's the first, that those population are mixed population. And when I say mixed population, it's like, so there's European phallodier and Mesopotamian phallodier and possibly hybrids. And that's something that is very new because we always assumed before that it was Mesopotamian phallodier that was introduced to, to the island. And I, I will come back to that uh, um, at, at the end. So the thing is, I don't have any DNA to confirm the the the, the uh, the samples are very badly preserved, so it will be difficult to. So in in the state now, I can I can say that they're probably a mixed population. And then if we look at uh, uh, Mallorca and Sicily, so you can see that there's a very good distinction. I just took again just the, the third axis, so it's uh, clear. So you have the Mesopotamian uh, Paleolithic, the European third year here, and you have the Mallorcan here in the city, so they're at, like at the very far um, end of the of the distribution. So are they are they European fallow deer? Well, for the for the Sicily, we know that they are fallow deer, and at some point they thought that they were red deer, but no, they are fallow deer. Um, and what about Mallorca? Well, from Mallorca, like the antlers says, they look they look pretty much like European fallow deer. And you, you saw like that for the, for the morphometrics, they also look fallow deer. But the weird thing is on the uh, mitochondrial DNA, so uh, from the mother, 
the genetic se uh, sequence are um, Mesopotamian fallow deer. They're closer to Mesopotamian fallow deer. So what does what does that mean? It's like European and Mesopotamian? Oh, so it seems here that we have like uh, hybrids. Like we have the the, the the clear proof of like the I hybrids. So just to summarize, so on Cyprus, it seems that the morphology says that there's mixed population and so maybe maybe both, maybe hybrids. Honestly, when I think, at first I was like, no, no, it's not possible, it's not possible. I mean, maybe there's, there's something wrong. But because I, I assumed for like all I've learned before that this was the case because we only found that and I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. But when I thought about it, I'm like, but actually that could totally make sense because people in Cyprus have been uh, coming from different places. We know that they are trading obsidian from Anatolia. They, we know that uh, some people are coming from Southern Lebanon, from Northern Lebanon. So before there is like a, a more island identity, there's like a, 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 a rupture in the contact and, and everything from uh, uh, the uh, neo Neolithic, uh, Aceramic Neolithic and, and through the Calcolithic and then they start to have exchange again. I haven't, so I haven't looked like in, <coughs> in detail like through, through the time to see if there is a change and stuff. I was just like, so for now it's just like, this, this can make sense. They can come from different places, but, so they could have imported European fallow deer, Mesopotamian fallow deer, they hybridized on the island, or maybe they already did found hybrid, or maybe they hybridized on the continent. I mean, there's, there's a, the whole possibility is actually, it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a more question that, that, than I had before. But, uh, for Sicily, well, you know, it's morphology and DNA says it's European fellow deer, so, uh, and it was a native, so it was imported there by humans. And Mallorca, the morphology says European fellow deer, but the genetics says uh, Mesopotamian fellow deer, so we have like hybrids. Hybrids. Um, and so, on, on Cyprus, there's, there's been this, uh, this uh, relationship with fallow deer for like over six millennia. Like very intensive hun hunting. We know now from like demographic profiles uh, with like all age at first and then younger. So there's a change in the strategy, like sex ratios, more balance before and then more males, supposedly younger males that are not necessary for production. So, but we, we think that, I mean, they've, they've never really been domesticated. I don't think there was any uh, reason to, 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 do, to do it. It's an island, they're, they're there, they're producing well. And there's, yeah, so, but over the time, to, to manage to, to keep them for like six millennia, uh, then it went like really fast Bronze Age, the population started de decreasing and like antiquity there's almost nothing and then they disappear in probably Byzantine time. But to, to have kept them for so long, they must have managed in, in, in a certain way, uh, but not necessarily domesticate. Uh, in, in Sicily, um, there's, there's not much I can say because there's very little material, uh, but it's from the Roman period. So it could be, I mean, most likely like uh, imported exotic animal that's what was kept in, a, in like a vivarium. And for Maloka, so we, we know that they are hybrids. For the, demogra the demographic profile, we know that we have like um, uh, young animals uh, and a high proportion of, of females. So it looks like they were kind of managed like a, a livestock and but maybe a bit more extensive than a vivarium, so like, but in still constrained area. Um, and we know like, for example, from Roman text uh, called Mela and Pliny that they mention the knowledge of like breeding and interbreeding between different species. So like, for example, between the dromedary and camel and the uh, horse and donkey that uh, gives a mule. So why, actually, why should it not have happened before? Uh, and, and elsewhere with fallow deer, we, we don't know if it happened in, in, the, in, uh, in nature, in a nature state, because 
there's maybe an um, overlapping area between the two, we don't know, but maybe it's the, 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 the fact of human because they have transported them a bit everywhere. And when you think about it, examples exist for like domesticated animals. They were wild once upon a time and they were domesticated. So, and some domestication led to, uh, uh, or not like full domestication, you can tame animals. So there's, there's lots of possibilities. And, and uh, if, even now, fowl they are like farmed. So are, are they domesticated? Not domesticated. They're they're kind of, and they're they're quite. I mean, they're quite gentle animals when they weren't they're not in root. So, for the for the male. So, yeah. Thank you for your attention, and um, I hope to have more more stories in the in the next year. Thank you. Thank you.